Adam Gillespie, uh, we've gone from drawing up various representations of relations to finding the, uh, scroll down to it, the domain and range of a relation. And now we're actually going to move into identifying uh, a specific type of relation called a function. And this specific type of relation, the one I just called a function, told you was a function, um, it's going to follow you every, your entire math life. I'm just going to put it down here so you know it's important. And what a function is, you only have you only have one y value associated with uh, each x value. And that should be an h right there. You only have one y value associated. I'll just say for every, for each x value. So if you have one x value, it only has one y value, value that is paired with it. Well, this seems like it's not a big deal. Who cares, you know, it's sort of arbitrary. But it's the foundation of all the advanced math that you're going to get into and that we'll build together. So before getting into why you should care, let's actually see if you understand what you should care about. What does it mean to be a function? So let's look at a bunch of data that I'm going to draw up. Okay, so let's get a box starting up here. Let's get a good box in here. Yeah, that's a good size box. And I'll still stick with the same colors for now. And all that I really want to do is create some sections here. Let's call these... Um, Well, I'll create a couple more sections first. But basically, we're going to talk about um, shoes being sold. We use shoes as a good example here. And uh, call this the date. Say, hey, uh, today's the 16th. So we'll call this uh, October 16th. Say, hey, this is the 17th. And let's just pretend like this is the 18th and um, from there I'll say these are the pairs of shoes sold and the total sales for the day okay so on the 16th, let's just say 53 shoes were sold, and the total sales for that day was $345. And the second day, 62 shoes were sold at a total of $981. And finally, the last day, let's turn that into a one. And then the last day, uh, the 18th, 53 shoes were sold again at the price of $674. And now you may actually notice that, hey, on day 16 and day 18, well, on the, or the 16th and 18th, 53 shoes were sold on both days, but at different prices. Well, that's not really a big deal because on the 16th, maybe people bought shoes that cost less money than on the 18th. Maybe people were buying shoes that were more expensive. Let's actually look at the domain and the range here. And since the domain is a discrete set of points, I'm going to use this curly type of brace here. And, uh, I've got 53 and also 62. I'll close the curly brace. And you might say, why did I write 53 again? Because I have two numbers that are 53, well, I only need to use it once. 
And although it appears twice, I don't need to use it a second time because elements that are in the domain, I don't repeat values. Uh, in other words, I don't repeat values for elements that are in the domain. But now let's look at the range. And my range is going to be the three values for total sales. So 343, it looks like a 9, 43, 981, 674. And now I can close those brackets with the curly brace. Well, the question is, is this actually a function? And I can see here, well, I have for 53 the price of $343. But also, I'm going to change that color up. So we'll circle this guy right here. But also, for the same 53, oops, hoping to get a diagonal here. Might have to just give, use a different tool. Um, I have a, for 53, I also have a sale price of $674. So for my X value, my domain, for my X value, I have two Y values. And I know that that cannot be the case. This is not a function. Let's look at this visually. So let's look at this uh, through mapping. I'm going to grab my tool for the map. And I don't even read, really need to use these boxes, but uh, I will just for simplicity for now. And let's copy that guy. So in here I have 53 and 62, and over here I have 345, 981, and 674. Now I can begin to map this. So 53 goes to 345. Sixty two goes to nine eighty one. But then fifty three, you also see fifty three also goes down to six seventy four. Oops. And now you can see that the X value is leading or being mapped to two different Y values. And that is an example of what it means to not be a function. It's an example of a relation that is not a function. Because to be a function, every x can only be associated with one y, no more. Let's take a look at a second problem here. I'm going to clear the screen. And this time I'm going to only give us or give you the mapping sequence. You're going to say, hey, this is either a function or it's not a function. And then let's use these guys again. Okay. So my first value, I'll say, hey, I'll give you 1, 5, 10. And 12, we'll say 7, 0, and 1. Now let's go ahead and map these guys. So 1 is mapped over to the 7. 5 will be mapped over to the 0. The 10, I'm going to map back over to the 7. That didn't turn out like a one. There we go. And 
one now, the five or the 12, I'm going to map over to the one. Okay, now automatically you've probably got some red flags flying saying, hey, wait a second. I see um, that 7 is associated with 2x values. But let's remember what a function is. So a function, I'm going to just move this screen around. A function only has one y value for each x value. So you see here that there is, for the 1, only one value that's a y, and also for the 10, there's only one y value. So to be a function, you can have the same y value for multiple x values. However, whenever you see two arrows flying out of the same x value, it is not a function. And to repeat that again, if you have two arrows coming out of the same x value, it is not a function. However, you can have more than one arrow pointing at the same y value, as long as there's only one y value for each x value. Therefore, it would be a function.